Okay, we're about ready to get started. Uh, first off, I don't remember if I introduced myself. Uh, I'm Richard Sealy, the head coach at, at Frankfurt High School. And again, we're here with Mike Reagans, uh, this, one of the statisticians, runs track wrestling for the high school, and then also one of our uh, uh, middle school assistants. As, as, as we go through, you guys just listen to our face-off, some of the uh, confusion that was with our announcing. Many of the middle schools here have different names uh, than their, their high schools do, so it was causing him some confusion. Um, but we're about to get started here at the 75-pound weight class. Uh, on map one, which you guys will not be seeing, uh, we have Lebanon uh, versus... Uh, well, hold on, that looks like they just switched it. It's Lebanon versus Kokomo. Uh, that's going to be an extremely important match for Frankfurt, being that we need as many uh, points taken away from Lebanon and Southmont as possible since they're closely trailing us. Uh, on mat three, which again, you guys will not be seeing, uh, we have Elwood versus RJ. How, how do you say that? Basket. It's Basket. Yeah. Now, what, what middle school is that? Is that I know, they're they're, they're Minnesota, Minnesota Wall? Yeah, Minnesota Wall. They're, they're, they're new this year. So and then, um, that's a pretty good program. They've got some good kids that have come out and wrestled hard. Uh, on Mount One, uh, you got Clinton Central versus Southmont here. Again, we're, we're going to be cheering uh, as Frankfurt fans for, uh, for Clinton Central. Not only are they in our county, uh, the big thing is, is that we want to keep points from Southmont and Lebanon as much as possible. Weaver's dad was an assistant coach with Frankfurt as of last year. He's now moved to uh, Central with his kids. Um, they're all real good wrestlers, very competitive, very strong, and uh, Weaver wrestled for Frankfurt and did place eighth at state for Frankfurt as a wrestler. Uh, I, I remember Weaver when I, I was in middle school, I believe he was a senior when I was in seventh grade. Um, he was definitely one of the guys that we looked up to as, as a young group here at the middle school. We were coached by uh, Chris Meeks. Uh, at the time, who's now at Rensselaer. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a coach under him at Rensselaer for uh, a couple of years. But Weaver, he spent some time at Purdue, he got some wrestling time at Purdue. Uh, one of his sisters, so uh, this young man, Jacob Weaver, his sister graduated with me. It looks like he's, I mean, he's staying in control right now. He's, he's staying in control, he's getting the takedown. Uh, now they're, they, they went out of bounds, so obviously uh, Southmont will start down and he will be on top position. Uh, we'll see if he tries to turn him or if he will cut him. At this time, Jacob Weaver, his record is 23 and one, and he is a fifth grader. And then our Southmont kid, again, I, I, I'm gonna struggle with pronouncing some names, so Mike, if you could help me. I believe it's Kion Ky Cornelius. And, he, and he's 13 and one, so uh, Clinton Central seen a little bit more mat time this year, uh, right before they, Southmont obviously is in Frankfurt. Frankfurt are in the same Sagamore Conference. Uh, I don't know if it's because he's been out or, or been wrestling JV and just won the spot, but the Clinton Central kid seems to have a lot more mat time this year. It's always impressive to me to see a fifth grader out here wrestling with uh, kids in you know seventh and eighth grade. He's, he's riding pretty good. He's keeping a good hand control here, and he's got, that'll be the end of the first period. To me, to me, it's very similar, I guess, to as a freshman coming in the high school, being 15 and 16 years old and having to wrestle 18-year-olds. Uh, sometimes your physical development is going to play a key uh, role in you know, your opportunities for success. Obviously, having a dad that's got a lot of wrestling experience and he's got a wrestling mat in his, in his barn or his garage. He was a member of the Nighthawks Wrestling Club with Coach Thompson for a, for a long time. I believe, where is he traveling now? He's CIA now. He's going to CIA. So he's a member of the CIA club. Uh, that, that's Central Indiana Academy for wrestling. Oh, Start. he got caught in the headlock. All right, you got to roll through. Got to roll through, roll through, come out. Oh, he's in trouble. He's being really smart. Uh, the best thing to do when you get caught in a headlock is keep your hips close to their hips and look for a re-roll, and I think he's gonna, he's, uh, he's, he pops his hips up, he's gonna get, get over. It. Head up, he's gotta get his head up. Oh, that's gonna be tight. And he, again, he's staying smart. He keeps scooting, scooting. Uh, he can't turn away from the headlock. Oh, he's in trouble now. He's close. He's got a bridge for 10 seconds. It's a great win for Southmont. Um, I think Weaver may have been the better wrestler, but it doesn't matter who the best wrestler is. It's who's the best wrestler today. Yeah. 
who's on the mat and who's ready to go. And get Sometimes caught you just get caught in that headlock, and that's, that's a dangerous weapon at the middle school level. I, I'm going to say it's a dangerous uh, weapon anywhere. Yeah, anywhere, yeah, anywhere. I've seen many of our great high school wrestlers uh, get beat uh, with a headlock. I, I can remember back in my day, I got caught in a couple headlocks by guys I know that I was, or I, I assume, or I feel comfortable saying that I was a little bit better than, but I wasn't the best wrestler on the mat that day. We will be awarding uh, one through six on a one-way class delay, so therefore we don't have any uh, we don't have any awards to, to put out right now. But after we're done with the 80-pound weight class, we will be moving on. We're just doing one weight class at a time, uh, a little bit slower, so we can go ahead and start this. Okay, I didn't notice. Okay, we're good then. Uh, so at the 180-pound weight class, already started on mat one. Again, we got Tri Central uh, wrestling Elwood. Uh, not really a factor for us uh, for Frankfurt uh, on mat three. You got Oak Hill versus uh, Lebanon. Obviously, again, Lebanon's one of those tough teams uh, that we're competing against today. On mat two, which you're watching here, you got Clinton Central again and Southmont again. So obviously, Clinton Central and Southmont are putting out uh, great young res lightweight wrestlers, which yeah, is typical of most schools. Yes. Southmont gets the first takedown. He's working in on that half. He's got to break him down first. He's keeping the hips on. He's keeping heavy on those hips. He's working on his half and his bar. He's trying to turn him now. Southmont's doing the right thing. He needs to pull that half off, though. Uh, Clinton Central has a current record of 17 and 5. And then uh, Southmont is 18 and 2. Again, both of them pretty good wrestlers for their weight class or for their uh, their age. We got a Clinton Central's a sixth grader, and also Southmont's a sixth grader. We're just over the minute mark, and we've got about 45 seconds left. Southmont's been controlling the pace of this match so far from the get-go. Current team standings right now, the top little well, say top three. Southmont. He's got 257, Lebanon with 263 and a half, and then Frankfurt with 265, still currently uh, your, what we like to call a 16 team invitational leader. Um, this year we, we did have one team not show up, so we only have 15 teams today. It's kind of, Salma's kind of a little high on that cradle. A little high on the cradle. He, uh, he's got, could he, put himself oh, in trouble. He did. He's got a reversal here. Since he's got the reversal, he's on the back. He's, didn't get the near fall. That's time. Okay, we're, we're all tied up here going into we're going to the second period. Putting Central very confident that he can get out from Southmont, choose his bottom. He's got to clear that hand. Central's got the, or the Southmont has got the tight waist. He's coming oh, up he's high, high, high. Again. He's in trouble. Southmont should just keep moving. Central, if he can keep moving out. He cradled again. Oh, he no, was, he's going to get the reversal. He does get the reversal. He's working for a head in the hole. If he can get that head up over, that arm up over his head. Clinton Central in recent years, and this is at the high school and middle school level, they haven't had great numbers. But their wrestlers always wrestle extremely tough. Uh, they, I think they only had, I think they had five, did they have five chances in the county this year uh, in conference? I or, I mean, so. I'm sorry, in the, in the county? In the county, yeah. And we were lucky enough that, that we, we were still able to beat them. I, I think we only beat them by three this year at the high school level. But being an extremely small school, it's, it's tough to get the numbers that you need to be successful as a team. But, I mean, the kids they do have, or obviously they're working extremely tough. Talks a lot about what their their coaching staff. I'm sure their practices are are pretty difficult when it when they're, they're struggling to keep the numbers high. Yeah, what they're doing right now though is the right thing. They're teaching their kids good fundamentals, and they just they are very very tough wrestlers. So Alex currently has a four to two lead. We are using track wrestling this year at this tournament. Um, 
We're not sponsoring track wrestling, but we, d we definitely love it. It makes our tournaments run a little bit Cross smoother. Cross face, and we're going to get a penalty call on South Mock. Biggest issue right now is, as we do our uh, our play-by-play -play here is our computer is running about probably 30 seconds behind the actual score clock. So we're now at 5-2 with that penalty against South Mock. We've got 30 seconds left in this, in this third period. I'm sorry, 30 seconds left in this match. At this point, Southmont just, or, uh, they've got to turn up something and do something. And uh, Central just needs to be smart and not get stuck there. Big move in the middle school. He's got a re-roll, maybe. Central, we're hoping for that re-roll. Got a bridge a little bit higher. Got to come over. South Southmont has struggled in this match to not get too high. He's teeing up. And that's the match. Southmont's going to get it. We, we will have a little bit of a delay here as we award uh, the 170 uh, weight class. No, the, the 75 pound weight class. I'm sorry, the 75 pound weight class. So hopefully all of our officials understand we need to, we need to hold this for just a second. Let's go, Michael! Why we don't stop fast? Update on team scores. I'll it's go not, ahead and go talk. Is this not updated? It's not updated yet. Southmont should have took the lead with those two pen or those two wins. We're struggling here a little bit. We're trying to find a refresh button here. See if we can catch up with uh, the actual scores tables. It may be right now, so 63. It, it says Oak Hill in fourth place with 255 and a half, Southmont with 263, Lebanon with 263 and a half, and then Frankfurt with 265. And again, we haven't had anybody wrestle yet. Um, on that one, you have Michael Morales of Frankfurt Middle School uh, versus Oak Hill. Uh, Michael is a seventh grader. He's 16 and 0 right now. Hamilton is a sixth grader of Oak Hill. He's 13 and one. What can you say about Michael Morales? Uh, Mike, is it, he is just practice? freakishly strong and just really fast. If he can ever get his technique down, he will be very dangerous at the high school level. I know, I know as, as a high school coach, we're pretty excited to see Michael move up. I've, I've seen him wrestle two or three times this year. Uh, I've been lucky enough, the matches I haven't been able to get to, lots of parents are sharing stuff on Facebook and Twitter, other forms of social media, and I've been able to see some of these guys wrestle. Okay, Michael's got a uh, four to one lead. No, four to four three. To three. Lead. I'm sorry, he got reversed. He's got to peel this half off, and he's got to get moving and put and uh, get back control. Uh, Coach Thompson felt very confident in his takedown, and he kind of did a boneheaded move and just pulled the kid on top of him, and that's been his downfall. Uh, he's been lucky enough to recover from that, but at a tournament situation like this against a quality kid like Oak Hill, uh, he can't make those mistakes, those small little mental mistakes. Over on map one, we, we have uh, Columbia versus Southmont. Again, we're, we're all about Columbia. What, what middle school is Columbia, Mike? Uh, they are out of Carroll, uh, Fort Wayne. Carroll, Fort Wayne? Yeah, they feed into Carroll High School of Fort Wayne, the Flashes. On map three, it's Lebanon versus Maconaquah. 
McConaughey has a, a five point lead right now, so that's looking good for Frankfurt. Morales on bottom, we definitely need the escape here. Maybe a reversal, maybe a headlock Headlock here. and throw it, don't roll through. Oh. He's got to sag his hips if he's going to throw that headlock. That's lock your hands. Lock hands and missed it. Oh, oh I, he called it. I thought I was going to talk the official into it. We've done that a few times from the corner. Michael needs to put two moves together. He's getting to his feet well. Uh, Oak Hill is doing a great job of returning us to the map. We need to be hitting our second move. Well, inbounds, Michael just did a good job of, of starting a reversal, but out of bounds. As he tries to return us, Michael really needs to work on that second move. Hit the switch. Yeah, he, that's, that's been his, he hasn't had a whole lot of challenges because he's been so fast and strong. Uh, most of his bouts end in the first 30, 40 seconds. So, if he can get this one escape here, he's got about 10 down. seconds. Oh, we're in trouble. There it is, reversal. Sink it, heavy, heavy, heavy. There's near fall. Frankfurt might have their first champion if he can, he can get really heavy on that shoulder. Oh, that was time. I wasn't watching the clock. I, was, I didn't understand why we were stopping that match. We take a nine to three lead. Nine to three lead. Going into the second period. Michael chooses to defer. Kill question would like to, to have a little conference with our official here at the head table. I believe the question is, is what type of near fall should we have called? Did the, did the time run out before we got the five count for a, a three point near fall or should it have only been a two point near fall? Elmer Oaks, the assistant official on the mat right now, he's a Frankfurt graduate. He wrestled for Coach Clarence Worthen. Uh, coach Clarence Worthen is a Hall of Fame wrestling coach for Frankfurt. Uh, he's had multiple state champions, multiple state uh, three state champions. Three state champions in several placers. Yeah, we have lots of place winners. Our, our wall of fame, everyone on that wall, uh, minus I believe three were coached under Coach Worthen. We're also very lucky. Coach Worthen has actually made an appearance today. He came over and talked to us for a few minutes. Uh, if he would have stuck around for a few minutes, we probably would have tried to interview him. All right, nice, nice in on the single. We got to get to the corner. Again, I like his aggression, but you, you got to be able to get to the corner. You stay square with your opponent, and it puts you in a, a bad situation where you're carrying their body weight. He likes to try and muscle things and puts himself in a bad position. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, if he can... This is similar to the position we were in earlier when we reversed him to his back. Yeah. It's very common in middle school wrestling where a guys feel comfortable that it's almost like where they'll put themselves in a, a bad position to be successful, which is something that's happening right here. Again, Michael's really good. They like to call it scramble type wrestlers. He's to get in a scramble. Time was up. <laughs> Again, Michael's scoring points here, but if we could do it just a little bit earlier, might have a chance to get the fall. We're at 13-8 now. Michael's in the lead. He's got about a five-point lead. Michael chooses neutral. Uh, we're just hoping he hits that corner. We know he's going to shoot. He's an aggressive offensive wrestler. He's just got to get the angle. Well, Oak Hill is aggressive getting in on that single. Forty-seven seconds left in the third period. Michael may be playing a little too cautious. He's got to really go after this. Five points is not enough for him to secure. There he goes. There's that double take low. Step over the leg. Get you two. Step over the leg. Now breaking down. Fifteen to eight. We're going to release him. Try to keep us out of position where we get reversed. Michael's probably best on his feet. Probably a, a really wise decision by Coach Thompson. Our kids uh, have had a struggle with just learning the, how to get rid of a guy, and we've tried telling them and they'll put themselves in bad position when they try and let somebody out so that when they're definitely the better wrestler. Got about 12 seconds left. I talked, I talked to Coach There's Thompson two. earlier. 
some, wrestle, out. some wrestlers with this lead, they like to get comfortable and kind of play defense when the best thing you can do is keep wrestling the style that you're wrestling, be aggressive, get, get the bonus points. Again, all three periods ended with the opponent on his back. This wasn't soon enough to get us those bonus points. And when I talk about bonus points, we're talking about if you get a pin, it's an extra two points in the tournament, you get a tech ball, it's a point and a half. Major decision uh, is a point. Again, we'll have a, a short delay here as we award which weight class are, are they on? That would be the 80, 80 pounders. We're going to be awarding the 80 pounders the ribbons, plaques, and medals. I can't remember. I think in middle school we award the, the actual chart. They get that and they get a plaque. Yeah, we, second and third get medals. Uh, sixth, fifth, and fourth get ribbons. And in first place gets the uh, gets a nice plaque along with the uh, wall board, uh, the bracket board. Up next on Mount one will be Elwood versus Lebanon, that, that's for third place. Again, we're, we're, I'm gonna keep repeating myself, we're, we're cheering against Lebanon Southmont right now, even Oak Hill. So Elwood could really help us out this round, uh, keeping points away from Lebanon. Over on mat three, going for fifth, we have Trice Central versus Carroll, not really a factor for Frankfurt. And then our opportunity for our second champion of the day is Elijah Anthony uh, versus Oak Hill. Uh, Elijah has won this tournament Twice already? Twice already. Undefeated wrestler so far in middle school uh, career. As I, as I think back on the history of Frankfurt wrestling, uh, obviously I don't know it all, uh, but I believe the last person that we had probably this successful may have been Josh Burge. Josh Burge was the last one that went completely the three-time champion and undefeated. This, this tournament actually, is, it's a pretty big deal. Um, I would say that it's equal or even greater than the conference and competition. And it'd be pretty amazing if he could finish out his career undefeated all the way through middle school. He is an eighth grader. He he likes to take shots and uh, let him up and work for near fall and try to tech fall him into a pin. Uh, so we'll see if that's what his strategy is today. Um, Quick to go up to four to two already. If we can get to actually getting released again, just like you said, Mike, we struggled releasing this year. I don't, did Elmer award the point? Yes, he yes. did. We got another takedown. Three takedowns already in the first period with a minute, minute 27 to go in the first. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get two more takedowns. He's working for some near fall right now. He's trying to get his tilt. Release again. He's going to, yeah. Elijah understands the importance of the bonus points. I've, I've heard him over here talking to some of his teammates about how we, we've got to have the pin. So we know that he'll go for that pin as soon as he feels like he, he can't. I don't want to say he's pointing with him. He's working on him. You he's, find this sometimes when you have a really good wrestler. It, the, co the concentration turns to, i got to get better myself. I can't worry about, you know. Right. Now, he should, he, he should work towards finishing him off at this point. We're, we're 10 to 4 in the, in the first period. We've got 42 seconds left. So let him up one more time. This should be it now. The next takedown should be finished. Carries it into and should be working for the pin now. I think he's flat. Elmer gets there the ball. There we go. He got it. So we, we now have two champions. In uh, a minute and uh, 31 seconds, looks like. It not, was, not quite a tech pin, but it was pretty close. What do we have? 14, uh, 14 to 5. 14 to 5. All five points Elijah uh, gave with escapes by letting him up to work on his takedowns. Elijah is one of those guys that we have that is a year-round wrestler. Uh, we're gonna you find him in the open mats. He goes to camps. Uh, he spends a lot of time outside of regular season, and that's why you see so much success out of Elijah. He went out to middle school state this year and ended up placing fourth. End up uh, having a small injury to his knee, which what he wasn't able to finish out. Um, had that not happened, who knows where he would have ended up placing. Yeah, he's a very dynamic and exciting wrestler to watch. I expect great things for him at high school and the high school level. What now he needs to focus on is uh, getting stronger and getting closer to a 106 pound weight class. I've talked to Elijah's dad a little bit. He said they, he's going to start lifting weights a little bit more this summer. And the goal is to be right around 106 by the start of season next year. Um, I, I, I think it's going to happen. Obviously, he's only weighing, what, what's his weight he's, right now? He's, right now he weighs in about 90 to 91 pounds. Okay, so I mean, he's, he's got some work to do. He, not only in the weight room, he's, he's also got to eat. Yeah. I mean, we got to have calories. So, so it, it's, 
it's going to be interesting to see if he can get his weight up. Just because you don't weigh 106 don't mean you can't wrestle. It's below 106. Uh, Rossville had a very successful wrestler this year at 106, 106 who weighed was, maybe 80 pounds. Yeah, I think he was about 85 pounds, Bryce. Uh, and uh, he, he, yeah, he was very good and almost made it out of region or sectionals. Yeah, Bryce so. Longnecker, he actually he wrestled with the Frankfurt Wrestling Club uh, before we turned it into the Nighthawks Wrestling Club. I think he spent a little right. bit of time with Chase and Nighthawks. Uh, he, he, he's an up-and-coming wrestler. I think he's going to find a lot of success. He's the stepson of uh, Shane Martin, who also wrestled on the team with Coach Thompson. I believe they were in the same. No, I think Shane may have been a grade or two above Chase, and I believe Shane was a grade behind me in school. So he's got a lot of wrestling experience, comes from a wrestling background. A lot of Frankfurt heritage there in, in that uh, wrestling style. His, his grandpa is here. His grandpa is one of the, anytime we throw a tournament, his grandpa is our, one of our head scores keepers at the table. So again, it is, it's, it's something that's in their family. So he's been around it for a while and he was a pretty good wrestler. So, I mean, it, it doesn't determine that you can't be successful just because you're light, but it helps if you're right at 106. You want to be you want to be at the top end of your weight class. You want to be at the top end of your weight class. It definitely helps. It does not hurt. We're just finishing up the uh, 90 pounders and the uh, other mats. As soon as they get finished up, we'll award the awards and then we'll get right back to 95. Eighty-five is reporting to the awards table, and as soon as the conclusion of the eighty-five pound awards, we'll move on to our next round. Looks like at ninety-five pounds, we will be having uh, Peyton Nugent from Southmont Middle School and Will Warnick from Oak Hill. Again, this is uh, kind of a lose-lose for Frankfurt. Either one of those win in the finals, it, it, it hurts our chances at uh, taking a lead. Southmont has taken the lead with 267. Lebanon's in second place with 265 and a half. And Frankfurt's at 265 still. Oak Hill's hanging right in at 254 and a half. Who are you? No. I, I don't know. Some of, some of these kids, they, they just walk right up to you. That's why. I, Sometimes when we run this tournament, the actual tournament director ends up being uh, in a closet where they do the laundry. Yeah. I know when Chris Meeks ran this tournament years ago when I was in middle school, he did all the pairings. Did every, he ran the whole tournament from the laundry room in between the two gyms. downtime on our camera uh, with our short uh, I guess it's not short our lack of space in this middle school gym it is a great middle school gym uh, it's just not ready ready for uh, 16 teams to come in so we're pretty crowded here so we don't have multiple cameras we were finishing up a few of the other weight classes Elijah finished early so you had even more dead time than we normally would again over on map one uh, we have McConaughey versus Clinton Central. Again, kind of a non-factor for us. And then Carroll versus Lebanon. I don't know if you repeat, you've already said that, Mike. But I had not said that. So we're kind of rooting for Carroll. We'll see if they uh, can pull it off. Um, and then, like I said, it's a, kind of a non-factor here on Matt One or Matt Two. So. If anything, I think Southmont's the more danger right now. So I guess we would want Oak Hill to win. Uh, if you're, if, uh, as a team, Frankfurt to, to help successful. You guys can hear that we definitely have a little bias in our, in our uh, voice. We're cheering for Frankfurt this year. It's been a long time since Frankfurt's won this Invitational. I believe Coach Thompson was in middle school the last time we won. So that would have been Probably 20 years 20 ago. 20 years ago, yeah. I believe so, it's, it's been over 20 years or, or right at 20 years. Uh, we placed second uh, the last uh, two years that uh, Billy Birch was the middle school coach. And um, that's the best we've been able to do. We actually lost it by a half a point his last year that, we, that uh, he coached here uh, about seven years ago. 
and then uh, been rebuilding our team since then. And like I said, Chase Thompson's been doing a phenomenal job and finally got the numbers out this year to fill every weight class and have a good uh, JV squad of wrestlers. And uh, we can actually make a run at winning this um, if our kids will just go out there and wrestle hard and, and get those extra bonus points and uh, not give up the pins to the other kids. Okay, Oakill remains in control. First period, we're about out of time, there it is. Oakill up two to zero. All right, so we now have an update on the scores. Frankfurt is at 276. Southmont is at 267. Lebanon is at 265 and a half, and Oak Hill is at 254 and a half. I love to see the, the Frankfurt Middle School pop to the top there. That's not a, what I would call a comfortable lead yet, as early in the day as it is. No, still lots of wrestling left, lots of matches left. We still need to keep winning uh, the guys that we got, and even in the guys that we've got that are in the championship round that may be in a, a third and fourth place match or a fifth and sixth place match. If they can win those matches, that'll definitely help. So we've got several guys that are in those positions. They'll be coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Oak Hill does it close to a Peterson roll, more like a middle school uh, arm roll. He does get the reversal, takes a 4-0 uh, lead. He's working on that bar, and he's, he's now he's back to a tight waist. Again, we have uh, two sixth graders at uh, 95 pounds, so we'll be seeing these guys probably the next couple years. Um, a lot of young wrestlers this year. We're at 95 pounds. I think he's getting near fall here. J.D. Minch is uh, the official. We're out of time here. J.D. Minch, many of you uh, wrestlers would remember, used to be the Northmont uh, wrestling coach for years. Had lots of success there. He's always led the coaches association as a tra been a leader in the coaches association as a treasurer. He's definitely somebody who's really committed his life to Indiana wrestling. Um, he's so one of the top officials too in the uh, ISWA um, with the uh, club wrestling, uh, and he does, he does he does tournaments just about every weekend. He's a really great guy. Okay, we have a 6-0 six six lead for Oak Hill. Oak Hill wrestler is 12-2, and, and he's a 6th grader. Southmont is 16-5, and, and he's a 6th grader as well. Typically in these lighter weights, you're going to find them being 6th graders or some middle schools do allow their fourth and fifth graders, sometimes even younger, wrestle at the middle school level. He's got to push that head down and get behind for his uh, takedown. Southmont's working. He's trying to get to pull that leg in. He's going to have to step out on the outside. We're going to call a stalemate here. Back to their feet. Twenty-two seconds left in the second period. Looks like at this point Oak Hill's going to be a little defensive. Okay, they went for the headlock and missed it. Oak Hill almost scored the takedown off that headlock attempt. Here comes another headlock oh, attempt. Oh, it's body locking. Oh, Oak Hill goes for the headlock. And he doesn't, he doesn't gonna, have it not going to have it. That'll be the end. Going into the third period. Okay, Oak Hill um, is in fourth place as a team. Southmont's in second, so if you're cheering for the hot dogs, you're definitely uh, glad that Oak Hill pulled that win off and stayed out of that headlock. Also glad that Oak Hill didn't hit that headlock and get those bonus points. Yes, that was the best possible outcome. As, as we award on a one-way class delay, we can go ahead and tell you who's going to be on map one and three before we get started. We got McConaughey, 
record of eight and four. Didn't list his grade. Not sure what grade that, that young man is in. Uh, you also have Kokomo over there. He's 11 and eight. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be a good match. Similar records over on Mat Three. Oak Hill again versus Southmont. Again, both those mat, those teams uh, are in contention for the championship. Hopefully no bonus points. Hopefully no bonus points. Again, hopefully Oak Hill will pull out the win with just a win, and uh, that'll keep us in it. Uh, here in the finals, we really want uh, Wabash to win. Um, Carson Tool though, is a very tough wrestler. Uh, we'll see what they uh, end up doing here. Jared Books is from Wabash Middle School. Uh, they both have really good records. Jared Books is 10 and one, and Carson Tool is 16 and two. Uh, Tool from Lebanon is a seventh grader, and Brooks is an eighth grader. Again, we normally wouldn't want this close to conference. Conference being next Saturday, uh, the teams that are in our conference will be in this tournament, but it also gives us a chance going into conference to see some of the opponents that we're going to be wrestling next week. Obviously, conference is extremely important to the middle schoolers. So you kind of have mixed feelings about not having to wrestle the same teams back-to-back -back weeks. But. Right. Uh, and the other thing, too, to kind of remember is we beat them in the duel uh, against Lebanon, but this isn't the same team. Uh, they have a lot of different kids wrestling, and they're wrestling at different weights. Uh, so they've made several adjustments. So um, they're always a tough team. They've actually won this tournament the last three years. So, and then before that, it was Southmont. I think we had a slam over on the far mat. Anytime you lift a wrestler, you have to return them safely to the mat. Looks like Wabash got the quick takedown. And uh, now, a cradle oh, he's working for a cradle. If he can lock that up, he's not going to get it. He's trying for some near fall for a tilt. He's close, but he's just, he's not quite there. He really needs to get his body swung over. He's got his leg in. Carry that chest and that chin. There's some near fall. We're not counting yet. I don't know if he's broke the, the criteria. He's so close, it's just right there. Potentially dangerous, across his throat. Across his throat. You really want to cuff the chin on that. We call football on the head, uh, especially at the middle school level. Officials err on the side of caution. Err on the side of caution. If you're remotely close, you will potentially dangerous. It's just, you just have to do that. Brooks has some pretty good top pressure here. Not yeah, allowing he, much, much to go on. He's also got wrist control on the right side. Now he's going for he's, the wing. He's going for the wing. If he can just uh, big step over there. He's, he's close, always scooping the head. That's near fall. There we go. That's 20 seconds. He's going to get his five count. He's got the pin. He got the pin. That, that's a big help. That is a very big help. Again, Tool is a good wrestler. I mean, obviously at 16 and 2. Wallbash is, I mean. Wallbash was just a better wrestler. Eighth grade came, came out to win it. And uh, that was a pretty impressive win. I love having the opportunity to watch some middle school wrestlers using some technique and uh, some things that we're trying to encourage some of our young high school wrestlers to do and aren't capable of doing it, maybe because of lack of experience or mat time. These middle schoolers are, I mean, in the championship round, again, that says a lot about this tournament is that it's its a tough tournament. I mean, oh, it's a very tough tournament. It's, it is is—it is very, very tough. You, champions here are, are a solid wrestler. Uh, there's no slouch weight classes here. Uh, with 16 teams and only 15 teams this year, but the 15 teams that we get are quality teams. Even if they can't fill the, fill the full roster, uh, everybody's got a few good They're kids. They're going to have a few good kids, yeah. Up next for Frankfurt, Batista. He's an eighth grader. Real excited to see him at the high school next year. He's 16 and one right now. Who's his one loss to, Mike? Uh, I was trying to think about that, and um, he was at he was at a heavier weight, and that was at 113. Uh, I honestly don't remember though for sure who it was he lost to. I believe it was Western. It was one of his first matches. 
which I believe it was a shepherd. Okay, this is the gentleman that uh, obviously shepherds uh, a family of wrestlers from Western. Uh, that Coach Thompson was telling me about that's been losing weight on accident. On accident, he yeah. He just works that hard. He's a hard worker. He says he, when he walks out of practice, he's dripping with sweat. So he's gone down weight classes, not by trying, just by by effort. If he wanted to, he probably could have made 100 pounds. He's, he, he, he walked out yesterday at 103. That, that's so, incredible. That's the kind of work that we're definitely looking for at the high school next he year. He is one of the holler, solid work ethics. He is uh, Elijah Anthony's partner, and he forces Elijah and Anthony to be as good as he is. And they both have really complimented each other in, in making each other better. Uh, obviously, we're wrestling Lebanon. If you guys can see them uh, getting ready to square off soon as we get done with the rest of the, the matches in the previous weight class and our awards. Zach Baldwin is an eighth grader. He's, he's 17 and four. We're, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen here, but I know that it's probably gonna be a rematch next week too. So they're both great wrestlers and it's gonna be an exciting match. Yeah, this will be a, this will be a tough one for him. Baldwin is a very competent wrestler. He's very aggressive, keeps his position really well, and he's just got that leverage. Uh, Batista struggled with taller kids. So hopefully he doesn't put himself in a bad position and can use his speed and his takedowns and uh, work, some, work some magic here and get the win. Some of you guys may remember, uh, we call him Easy. Easy. He, uh, I believe he's in some sort of form of the military. National right Guard, now. Indiana National Guard. That he was a wrestler at the high school. This is his little brother. So he's been around wrestling a lot. I, I don't know how long he's actually been wrestling himself. Sixth grade, came out sixth grade. Came out Just kind of came out of nowhere. And, uh, He's just really uh, very smart. He's an honor roll student. Uh, just an all around great kid. That's a nice switching off on that double. You gotta finish it, find the body. Keep your hips low. Batista with the, with the two on the takedown. I do know this, one of the most exciting things as a head coach that I've heard about this young group of wrestlers uh, from the Frankfurt Middle School is the fact that we, we've got multiple kids on the honor roll. Uh, very little discipline issues. That's one of the most important things because if you're not eligible to wrestle, that's one of the biggest concerns. Some of these kids in the past, sometimes we've had kids that maybe aren't as disciplined. They work really hard. Man, that's a risky move, but man, that looked nice. He hasn't he's got he's been working that oh. move, and he's got to be very careful not to expose his back on that. I'll tell you, Mike, that reminds me of uh, Alex wrestling your son yeah. a few years back. Take, taking some chances, scoring some points. He didn't get the near fall on that. I thought he should have got the two count, but. I like a kid that'll take chances. Wrestling, is, it is a grueling sport, but the biggest thing that you do is you want to have fun. You go out there and you take chances. You're not afraid to make mistakes. That's fun. I mean, that's, that's wrestling. He's got his half in. Now, if he can jump sides and get it over there, he's got the bar in half. Jump sides. There you go. Come on, now work it. Big step. Got to get that big step right over there, right over. Drop your elbow across there. Oh, he keeps going sides. He's switching. We got about 25 seconds left in this period. He's, he's got to keep him tough here if he can't score any near fall. He cannot give the one up. This kid is very tough. A Baldwin is, is he's been in these finals, I think, every year. Um, I know that I, I believe he won it either sixth or seventh grade year. I love the fact that he's riding with risk. Getting wrist control is a key to riding on top along with forward pressure. He's doing a great job of controlling him. Not really giving him many opportunities to get to his feet. Steve Miller with the flip. Lebanon defers. Coach Thompson uh, helps uh, Batiste out by encouraging him to pick bottom. Probably the easiest place to score points from. This is probably where he has been weakest at is on the bottom. He's fast, but he does tend to expose himself. So hopefully he can get out here. That's a deep half. Look away, elbow down. Evan also has the inside leg. If he can just get up now, if he can just shake him off. He's high, Lebanon's high. We shake him off, step off the leg, we're out. All we gotta work is for we one can here. Be out. Or we sit hard. Oh, there we go, nice we are out. That should be one. He's got a chance to try and get two. Go back. That's one. We'll take one. Batista's aggressive on his feet. 
I'd rather have one than the two takedown versus the, the two reversal. Yeah, that was probably the best outcome for us because he should be able to get another takedown on this kid. We are wrestling We've got about 10 foot. seconds, so we'll see. Oh, there okay. it is. The Lebanon kid seems to be grabbing our headgear a little bit. I know we, we have these LDR headgear. There's head two. Gear. Two seconds. Awesome job. They got a little bit more uh, more pieces yeah. than a normal headgear, and I don't know if it's the wrestlers, our opponents don't know, aren't used to it, or but it seems like we've had a lot of grabbing the headgear here. All right, so we're going into the third period, and we're uh, up five. I'd be watching out for that headlock that we've been caught in a couple times by some of our other wrestlers earlier today. He's going to try and get skinny, come out the back. Oh, he's going to work Backhand. high. He's going to scissor, scissor in the head is illegal. That way he didn't, he didn't quite touch feet. Now he should try and get skinny, come out the back. High head wins. And like I said again, this uh, Baldwin is tough. We've got to get our head out to the side. Get set, yeah, we need we need a few more points if we can. Don't don't get there. Don't get there. Obviously, at this point, we're we're not one to not be aggressive, but it's always better to to, yeah, to give up a takedown. Give up takedown and go then go to the back. He fights seven. through it. He's wrestling. Gets a, gets a takedown. We seven to nothing. Again, it, it's probably better to cut him here if you feel like you're getting three any seconds. Trouble at all. I think we're all right. Yeah, nice job. It's the third, the third champion for the hot dogs today. A seven to zero victory. Again, another eighth grader that we're extremely excited to see him move to the high school. He has a good summer in the weight room. Gets to some open mats. Maybe gets a few uh, out of season matches. And I, I got a feeling he may be battling for a varsity position next year. Again, we, we're going to have a little short delay here as uh, we get ready to award the top six places on a one-way class delay. We like to keep you up to date on the team scores. It's just a matter of how often our uh, computer will update for us. Looks like it's... Uh we're at 276 in first place. Southmont's closed the gap, though. They're up to 271, and Lebanon's right behind them at 269. Oak Hill's staying right about 258 and a half. Um, again, uh, Lebanon and Southmont, it, it's a four-way race. They could, any, they, we've all got kids in the finals and in the, and in the uh, consolation rounds here that uh, if they start pinning, we could be in trouble. We have a little delay. I want to thank Mike Reagans for joining me. This is a, a very short delay, or not delay, I'm sorry, a short notice. I knew we were going to be here watching the matches and kind of just, I think Mike's actually one that came up with the idea. It'd be great if we could record these matches. So I ran over and grabbed some equipment and we set up and hopefully we can have these out. Again, we're, we're recording live, but we're hoping to have these out. Hopefully you guys are listening on, on Sunday or Monday following the match here. And hopes the reason that it's great to do this is really we want to keep building our sport. Sport of wrestling is, is we had a, a chance to lose in the Olympics a few years ago, and the whole wrestling community has kind of come together to, to promote wrestling. And hopefully this is one of those things that is going to help us. Get kids excited about being on the mat, being on the center section, getting on the podium. It can yeah. do nothing but build, build the sport. Absolutely, that's just building the sport. I mean, I, I can't stress it enough. That's what's made us so successful this year. It's not that we have good wrestlers. That's been a big help, but we've had numbers. Uh, they say a lot of times that wrestling's not a team sport. Well, it absolutely is a team sport because if you don't have somebody to practice against, you cannot make yourself better. And having great practice partners has made our team so much better in that room. And uh, it, it's just been really exciting this year at the, at the middle school. I know in my experience as, as an athlete, my memories are more about what we did as a team than what I did as an individual. We were one of the lucky teams to have a, a great group of kids come through all at the same time. We were able to, to go to the state finals and that's one of my 
my best memories right up there with that. And it sounds it may sound like I'm lying to you, but winning this tournament and winning the conference in middle school was was very close as one of my top memories in wrestling as an athlete. The success we find it as as a coach, just winning the county, placing second in the Twin Lakes Invitational. Yeah, we remember those great athletes that make it to state and place, but a lot of it, the memories that are made are made with the brothers and sisters that are on the mat with you. And doing it as a team is, is extremely important because if you don't have practice partners, you're not going to be good as an individual anyways. So we really do try to create that team environment, family environment in the sport of wrestling here at Frankfurt. And, and again, like I said, uh, th this match here, we're kind of rooting for Kokomo. Uh, the uh, Clark Stitz is a uh, very competent wrestler. He's been very aggressive and very strong. Uh, we'll see what he does against the uh, Lebanon kid. The Lebanon kid's very good. Kind of came out from basketball and got a record of 7-2. Uh, he wasn't on a team when we uh, faced him in our earlier dual meet. So, I don't know. He looks like a wrestler to me. He looks like a wrestler, right. So I, we see that. I'm not trying to recruit for, for Bocock over there at Lebanon, but this kid should probably be on his wrestling team uh, next year. Well, I guess in two years. He's only a seventh grader. Uh, Kokomo kid is an eighth grader. He's seven, he's 17 and 0. Kokomo does have a, a two to one or four to one, excuse me, lead, and in control right now on top in the first period. With just under 45 seconds, we're down to 40 seconds left in this first period. He's having a little more trouble with this Lebanon kid than I think he thought he was going to have. He may have came in just a little overconfident because this Lebanon kid is no slouch. He's very strong, and for the wrestling experience that he has. Yeah, technique, technique is extremely important, but you know what? When you have the tools, yeah. I mean, he, his physique for a seventh grader is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty He's, good, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and like I said, I don't really want Lebanon to win, but I, I agree with the uh, Lebanon coaches there. I believe that was two. His feet looked like they were in the knee, but we'll see what the ref ends up saying. They're going to give the reversal to him. So after conferencing with the other outside ref, he has changed his call. Real quick, over on Mount 1, we have McConaughey versus Southmont. Uh, the score currently is McConaughey is down to or is zero to 2. Uh, again, we're, we're rooting for McConaughey in this period. Lebanon locks hands. Over on Mat 3, we have Columbia versus RJ uh, Basket. Basket. What, did we, what school did we say that was? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I forget too. I forget right? now. We're going to have to talk to our tournament director and start implementing it or uh, and putting the names in as uh, their high school Their names. high schools that they're from, they're affiliated with, that they feed into. I mean, most of them end up having the same mascot on their uniforms. It's just really confusing because when you see them, you know who they are, and then you look down at their name, and it's RJ. You know, right. We, You're like, who's RJ? And we've got three seconds left in this period. We might have some points here. Oh, that's really close. I don't know what I would call on that. Kokomo is asking for a one point escape for loss of control. Elmer's over there telling him, I don't think so. I'm watching the clock. Lebanon defers. Kokomo chooses bottom. Going into the second period, and just, just so you know, uh, in middle school wrestling, it's 2-1-1. Two, one, one. two minutes, one minute, one minute for our periods. Not really a technique that I coach is going up, kind of swimming backwards or reaching back there, but he was successful at it. Put himself in a bad position on the line. Um, no change. This, this Lebanon kid is just super strong. He's just really strong. He needs to get his hips out and cut and just get his one. A stalling call. You have about five seconds for most officials to, to actively return or attempt to return a wrestler to the mat when they get to their feet if you're still in control. If you don't do that, they're going to get you for stalling. You get a, a warning, which is, which is what just happened here to Lebanon. Depending on the situation in the match, most of the time. Oh, he's in trouble now. He's got that half buried. It's deep. Come on, come on, roll through. 
he's going to make it off his back. I don't know exactly what we're going to do. Who knows what's nah, going to happen to get out. Scramble. I don't know if he got a two count or not. No change. No change, no near fall. We're sitting at five to three right now. Kokomo's looking a little gassed. He may not be conditioned as he should have been. He's had a, not used to having these tough matches to go into the third period. Again, we're still, still hoping he pulls it out. He's got the cradle. Oh, he's in a bad position here. It's in a very bad position. That's almost a giving it up. No change yet, but mm -hmm. yeah, he's going he's gonna to pull, he's gonna pull it all the way over. There's near fall. He's going to stick him. That right there is experience in wrestling. That's what it came down to. Just the kid that's been wrestling a few years longer. Very tough match, very good match. I give props to Lebanon, that was a strong kid. I'll tell you, I just appreciate it. That it's an exciting match. Both kids were going out there and getting after it. It, it wasn't a, a match of stalling or defensive right. tactics. They were both just going out there and wrestling. A lot of respect for both those young men. Again, a short delay as we uh, go to the awards podium. Kokomo has another wrestler up here in the in the finals. He's going to be facing off against McConaughey. East of Kokomo is a seventh grader. He's 15 and three, and Logan. Uh, McConaughey, again, McConaughey didn't submit their grades. It's 14 and 2. Over on map one, we'll have Carroll versus Southmont. The Carroll kid is a seventh grader at 15 and 2. And Southmont, Benj is an eighth grader at 17 and 3. Over on map three, we have Oak Hill again. And Lebanon facing off. Oak Hill has an eighth grader, Lebanon has a seventh grader. Records are 10 and 5 and 14 and 6. A lot of good matches and point leaders are out there on the mat right now. Unfortunately, Frankfurt doesn't have anybody in the top six, so this is more about keeping points away from the teams that are approaching us. Our current standings right now, Mike, if you would please. Uh, we're hoping they're up to date. They look close. Uh, in fourth place, Oak Hill, 258 and a half. In third place, Lebanon Middle School with 269 and a half. Southmont is edged out at 271, and Frankfurt has got the lead at 280 points. We kind of caught up two to zero here on the on the mat one. Or I'm sorry, not mat one. Going for first on mat two. Seems like the gym's starting to clear out a little bit. Obviously, some of these teams that only he's got the wing. He's, gonna, he's trying to big step over. This could be a, this could be there. Oh, there we go. He's got near foot. Well, nope. Elmer counted two. Elmer counted two. Wow. Temperature definitely getting a little bit better in the gym as some of these teams start to clear out. Now McConaughey in a headlock, but he's got his arm in a position where uh, he might be moving it out. He's basically preventing the pin by having his arm under his opponent's shoulder right now. Setting back to the near side headlock. And we got it. Fall. Again, McConaughey doesn't look like they're, they're in the race for the team championship here. At 187, where Frankfurt being the leader at 280. So that those bonus points really aren't going to concern us. Again, you guys can't see Matt one. But on map one, Carroll is down one to five to Southmont. That's not correct. We our our computer screen is not up to date right now. That's map one. That's where my confusion is. They're, they're backwards to what I thought. But yes, Carroll is down one to five to Southmont over on map one, and then on map three. I believe that match is over and we're ready to move on to the next round as soon as Matt 1 finishes up.
Mark, are you aware of who our next Frankfurt wrestler is up on, on the map? It should be uh, Christian Cruz at 126. Uh, he should be going for uh, placement. I'm not sure if it was the third and fourth or if he's going for fifth and sixth. I'm not sure where he, he uh, lost that last. Mike spent most of the day helping out as a, he is one of our middle school coaches as an assistant. We spent most of the day announcing, so he, he hasn't been able to watch all the wrestlers that he wanted to because he, he was busy sending wrestlers to their mats. I've got to see a lot of wrestling today personally myself, but you know, I, I left for a little bit to go get some equipment to set up for this broadcast. Ran home to see my kids and visit with my family a little bit. So we haven't got to see all the matches. And we don't have access to everything here today. But we should see another Franklin wrestler up here at 126 here in just a few minutes. Yeah, it looks like he'll be over on mat one. Christian Cruz uh, versus Martinez. He's going for third place. So hopefully he can uh, pull this win out. Uh, he's one that probably should have been in the finals, but he left his head hanging and got caught in a headlock and uh, ended up losing the match that he shouldn't have lost. Yeah, 126. The wrestlers are beginning to take the mat, even though we have some matches still at 120 going on. Uh, Kokomo yeah, has a sixth grader out there, uh, Washburn. He's 16 and one. He looks pretty put together for a sixth grader, in my opinion. And then Oak Hill uh, has Hernandez, who is an eighth grader, and he's 11 and two. So we'll see if the age is going to play a factor in this. But the kid does look wired up. He's ready to wrestle. We'll see if that does play a factor in it. He's, uh, looks like he's going to come out like a buzzsaw. We'll see what happens. Do you remember which one of these kids uh, ended up ca catching the Frankfurt in the headlock? I do not. All right, we're finishing up the 120-pound weight class right now over on Mount 1. Southmont ends up getting a major decision. They did get some bonus points on that, which could uh, boost them up. They are, they are trailing right now, Frankfurt, in the team competition by six. When that score upstates, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to close the gap here. Uh, they may even take the lead with that place. Said hopefully after this 126 round, again, we're against Southmont, so he really needs to win this. Um, I don't think he saw him in our dual meet against this kid. I think he uh, wrestled 132. He's another one that dropped the weight class. Um, started out 132 and then uh, was closer to, to uh, 26. He's weighing out about 124 now. So Cruz, again, eighth grader, 14 and three, is squared up against Columbia. Martinez of Columbia, one of our middle schoolers with a, an odd last name for me, is eighth grader at 12 and three. Over on mat three, McConaughey versus Southmont. Again, McConaughey could really help out the dogs with a win. You will be watching the match, Kokomo versus Oak Hill. Team scores have yet to be updated. The 
scores that we're getting right now. Frankfurt is still in the lead with 280, and Southmont trailing with, with 274 in second place. Kokomo gets that first takedown. He came after it like we kind of thought he was going to. We'll see what he does on, on, on. It's not really working anything here. Well, it looks like the Frankfurt, did we forfeit to Southmore? Looks like so Southmore is, is getting an injury default. That hurts. So South Southmont's going to score those points over Frankfurt over on Mount One due to injury default. I haven't heard what what's going on with Christian. Christian's uh, over. He's wrestling Isaiah Martinez. Oh, I, excuse me. I, again, I, I'm back. I did the same thing. There. I did. Looking at the screen here that we've got, it, it shows the mats opposite of what we've got. Uh, so Christian's still in it. Uh, he did not get the first takedown. Sorry for the confusion. The match that you are watching, Kokomo is still on top, two to zero. Uh, I'm going to say that Christian has got blood time. Well, they cleared the mat. I oh, maybe not. It looks like he didn't win. No, they already have the 132 pounders up on that mat. Again, we are kind of crowded here in this gym. Our view is instructed about the only thing we can see is what's right in front of us here on mat two. So far, the Kokomo kid has, has rode the uh, Oak Hill kid pretty well. We'll see what happens in the second period. You got about eight seconds. Two to zero lead going into the second period. Kokomo to first Oak Hill. Kill chooses bottom. And we had an injury fall on mat three, and then uh, I'm not quite sure what happened over on mat one with Christian. Uh, do we see the results up there in the top bar? I don't think so. Kokomo going possibly for a cradle here. He is letting his head hang. We might get a, oh, a cross face cradle. Looking at it, if he can, if he can lock it up. No, he cannot lock it up. He's got about 30 seconds of ride time left here. Oak Hill's going to get one, looks like. Oh, he carried it. He kept, kept on top. We talked about the the warnings for stalling there. Obviously, the Oak Hill gentleman was to his feet for more than five seconds, and Kokomo didn't get called for a stall call. Until now, because he's just looking at ankle and riding, because he was attempting to return to the mat. J.D. Minch decided that he felt like the Kokomo wrestler wasn't working the turn Oak Hill, and that's why we got that, that stall call there. He, this happened earlier. He got nailed for excessive... Uh, mean crossface. Mean crossface, yeah, kind of throwing a punch. Again, he, he's a sixth grader. You, you know, you want to teach your kids to be aggressive. You can be aggressive and mean with a cross face from, from right up there without right having up, to draw without back. Have, yeah, well, without having to draw back and fist up. And that will be time. Looks like Kokomo is going to choose down. Feels pretty confident he's going to get out. You can turn into him. Oak Hill did a good job of keeping wrist control there, which almost prevented a reversal, but unfortunately he ended up on his back and JD's counting near fall here. We got a five count, so that's a five point move right there. Huge for Kokomo. We do have an update on team scores. I don't know if it's after the conclusion of this weight class, minus the match that you're watching right now. But Southmont has taken the lead with 281. Frankfurt is at 280. Lebanon seems to be or not 
gaining in points. They're at 269 and a half, and Oak Hill is currently at 260 and a half. I've been coming to this middle school invitational since I was a sixth grader, and even when I was coaching at Rensselaer for those years, this is probably the most exciting one other than when I was wrestling myself as a hot dog, you know, getting to watch our kids competing. We're up there and the, we're bouncing back and forth between first, second, and third. It's been a good day. I, I, would, I would look to see the, the Kokomo kid get called for stalling again. He's running a really, well, now he's going for a cradle, but he's letting his head hang, but he was really riding that tight waist. That was time. Saved by the bell or the whistle. Maybe a three-peater here. He's a sixth grader and just won his first Frankfurt Middle School Invitational Championship. That's really tough at 132. I mean, that's a... Uh Typically, a, a, a your your eighth grade weight class. Yeah, as we get up to around 132, you're going to find a lot more eighth graders uh, being on, in the center mat here. The Frankfurt wrestler will be over on mat one. Uh, what what do you have to say about about our chances over there? Uh, Ivan is just really strong and fast. Uh, this is his first year wrestling. He came out late in the season. Um, I believe he was a basketball player and uh, he came out after basketball was over with and decided to wrestle for us. A first year so. wrestler as an eighth grader, he's got an 11 and 3 record. I'm pretty impressed with that. When you get those raw wrestlers, you know, and they get some experience in eighth grade, you know, and then we get them hopefully to yeah. continue wrestling when he gets to high school. I mean, the, yeah, it, there's what, no mistakes to have to work on fixing because he hasn't had a chance to build some bad habits. So it's exciting that, to have even those kids that don't have a whole lot of experience but obviously are great athletes. And, like and, and that's what we've seen today. Uh, his losses have been to kids that are strong and know what they're doing. Um, so as he learns more wrestling and just gets better on his feet and, and, and learns more moves, uh, I just see great things ahead of him if he keeps wrestling. Ivan will be squaring off against McConaughey. Again, McConaughey did not submit grades. He is eight and five. Taylor McConaughey. Over on mat three, Oak Hill will be squaring off against Rossville. And then on the center mat, which you guys will be watching, will be Kokomo and Lebanon. Uh, Kokomo, eighth grader, record 18 and one. Howard. I, I would just by going off a of record, I would say that he's probably a strong favorite. Lebanon's got a seventh grader. He's 15 and four. Again, hopefully Kokomo can help the hot dogs out by keeping Lebanon from being able to score points. They are in third place. Lebanon and Frankfurt are starting to build a little bit of a lead. We're about 10 points away from Lebanon. We're still currently in second place with Southmont nine points in front of us. No, I'm sorry, one point ahead of us. One point in front of us, yes. Um, so, I mean, this is still wide open. Lebanon could fight back in this. But it seems like it's going to be a Southmont Frankfurt. Possibly, yeah, possibly I mean, right. It, that's it, where it, it's going it's, to come down to. And I, again, who knows what's going to happen in these upper weights? But over on Matt one, uh, Ivan's battling over there. He's hasn't scored the takedown. We call stalemate. They're both back to their feet. It's zero zero. Very similar to the match that you guys are watching here on Matt 2 for the championship between Lebanon and Kokomo. A lot of action, just, just not a whole lot of point scoring yet. was to the Kokomo kid. Came in there and, and he was doing pretty good against him, but then like I said, this, uh, the Kokomo kid just knew a few more moves and uh, ended up pinning him in the second period. And uh, that put him into the third place match, so. Kokomo kid does seem like a 
pretty physical kid. As, as, I'm, as I'm watching him here, the first time I've watched him wrestle today, he seems like he's in on a lot of good shots, a lot of good takedowns. He's just not finishing. He's just not finishing him, right. And that, that's a testament to, to uh, Lebanon's program. Uh, Getch is just a really, really solid wrestler for a seventh grader. Ivan is down two to zero over on, on mat two for Frankfurt. Mat one, again, we keep getting confused with our, with our mat assignments. They're opposite of the way we see them on our screen. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if next week at conference, if this doesn't be uh, Getch and uh, Duarte, Ivan, in the finals uh, next week, uh, depending on how they, how they uh, match up in the brackets. Okay, Kokomo chooses bottom after Lebanon defers. Caution to the Lebanon wrestle for an improper start. Oh, he pulled him. Well, oh, he's going to try and carry it. It's a good scramble there. He's going to try and cross face it, get his leg back. This Lebanon kid's just really strong. He doesn't look as strong, but he, he is really giving this Kokomo kid everything he's got. We've got about 40 seconds in the second left, and uh, Kokomo better get to pick up the gas here and move. Ivan's on his feet. Nope. JD just informed that he is on bottom. It's still two to zero over there in the third period. We got 50 seconds left to go in that match. Ivan can really use a reversal, or we can go for uh, one escape. I, I believe we, we just got the reversal and tied it up over there. Now can we, can we hold position? We did. Oh, that, that happens a lot, too, because like I said, he's an inexperienced wrestler. and uh, Illegal move, one point. As he tries to go for those bar halves, he forgets to grab a bar and puts a, a full Nelson in. So, so Ivan, Ivan gives McConaughey one point for an illegal move, and then we're going to go ahead and cut him. 30 seconds left to go in the match. Ivan's going to have to have a takedown to tie it up and go overtime. Okay, here on, on mat two going for first place. Lebanon's choice. He chooses bottom. He's down by two. He looks like he's really struggling with conditioning right now. Ivan might hit a headlock. He got a headlock, but it was just a second too late, it looks like, from over here. He went after it, just, just a little too little. Clock ran out on him. You know, Ivan, for a first-year wrestler coming into this tournament and placing fourth, it's, it's a pretty good it's a pretty pretty nice huge, accomplishment, yeah. accomplishment for a... Out of the 15 teams that are here coming in and placing fourth at, a, at 132 pounds, that, that's huge. Do I think he has the ability to be in the center mat? Absolutely, but, you know, with the little experience he has, that's still an accomplishment. Kokomo has the lead here. Lebanon chose bottom. Obviously, Lebanon needs to score. Got about 10 seconds here. It doesn't seem like he's done too much to get that reversal or escape. A lot more action here with short time to go. We're down to three Boy, seconds. Boy, Kokomo's just falling so well, and that's going to be it. All he's going to do is hold on. There it is. I don't think Kokomo realized he just won his Invitational Championship. It, it has been a long day here for these athletes. I'm looking. It is 6.10 o'clock. 6.10. Yeah, 16, our, our, middle school, our middle school wrestlers have been here since 5.45 a.m. this morning, so they're going on 12 hours. Uh, I don't know about some of the schools that had to travel, what time they left their schools at, but uh, it is definitely a long day at this invite. Again, we do have an outstanding gym here at Frankfurt Middle School for, for a junior high or middle school, but when you're trying to run a tournament with, with 15 teams, Really need one or two more mats, and that would make this go a little quicker. We, we obviously would love to host it over at Case Arena. Case Arena is an absolutely wonderful uh, facility to host wrestling. 
obviously it was designed for basketball with the uh, history we have here in Frankfurt for, for basketball. And we host the sectional. We, ho we hosted the girls sectional. We host the volleyball sectional in there. We do host the wrestling sectional uh, until any change happens. So we're indefinitely hosting that. Or we would probably move this tournament over to the yeah, high school. Absolutely. Where we could so. put four mats down in Case Arena and you could still run your JV or exhibition uh, and matches it, in the auxiliary, auxiliary gym. gym. So, yeah. So next we're going to have Daniel Garcia. Uh, he's a uh, came out and wrestled for us last year as a first year wrestler as a seventh grader. And uh, I think he ended up placing fourth in this tournament last year. And uh, this year he's in the championship bout. We'll see what he can do. Uh, he's just improved. I can't, I can't say good, enough good things about him. He's just really, really improved. A lot of times you look at him and you don't think he's doing that well. And uh, he's just, he's hitting something that just takes a couple seconds to hit. He is 16 and 0. Russell a little cautious. He's a little bit of a back step type of approach to, to get his opponent to come into him. Again, he's another one that came in and he was wrestling 145 and then uh, through no fault of his own, just hard work, he was down to 135, you know, and almost making 32. And uh, he's weighing right now about 135, 136. And uh, he's just a really hard worker in the room. I can't tell you how exciting it is as a high school coach with this, these young wrestlers to, to hear these coaches here, Coach Thompson, Coach Kelly, uh, there's two. Obviously, obviously the Reagans here talk about their work ethic in the, in the room. Keep following, he's doing a great job. Got his two takedown. He can just break him down and get that bar in half in. I really want to see uh, Daniel win this. Uh, he's just, like I said, he's a great kid. And uh, he's always willing to help other kids out. Gonna let him up, go for another takedown. We'll see what happens. He's got about 45 seconds. Over on Matt Wan, Lebanon is wrestling Oak Hill. Lebanon does have a five to one lead. On Matt three, Clinton Prairie has a wrestler who's 16 and two, an eighth grader, versus Kokomo. And it's zero to zero over there, not much action. I don't know. Steve calls him out. He did, his, his foot was out before he got the takedown. Got a little lucky there. He's got to get those po toes pointing down and slide, not just try to muscle everything. Don't get your hips back. Oh, he's got him caught. Hold it. Gets on that hip, now he's in trouble. We need to bail on this. Sometimes it's worth giving up two points to prevent giving up four to We have two seconds, four to five, so, but yeah. right. You want to make sure you don't give up that near fall. No. We're going to go ahead and choose down. Okay, Daniel is down two to three. He's on bottom now. Needs to be inside the leg for that reversal there. London's up 10 to 1 over Oak Hill. Our match over here uh, at 138 on mat 3 is completed. There's the reversal. He's got him. Good job, Daniel. Come on, sink that. Sink that. Chest. We're a little high, but if we can sink our chest, get our head up. Big chest here. Look up. He lost it, but he's going to get five points out of that. We're looking at the clock. We're going to make sure that we keep Ten control. seconds. Keep a hold of him. Keep him down. What? Are you, I'm not, I didn't see that. I'm not sure. You say we locked hands, but I'm really not aware of what that call is. We are reaching under, grabbing the tricep with one hand and a tight waist on the other. He called it a chest cradle. Chest cradle. I'm, a, I'm still confused on. I don't know if I've ever heard that one called. Steve is a very good rep, and I, you know, I, I, I'm sure that's what it was. I just. 
Now, I don't know if that was a makeup call or what, but I think we locked hands there and Steve we, didn't yeah. call it. So I think Steve may have realized that he's going to make it up. Now, I don't think the official would come over here and say I did a makeup call. Steve, they were side by side. Steve says he didn't see it, and the assistant referee says you got to allow for reaction time. I don't know. I'm, I'm just glad that it went the way it did. Yeah, 7-4 and uh, going into third. Now, Daniel needs to be really smart here. If it uh, gets kind of hecky, he's just got to give one up, not give the reversal. Oh, he's leaving his head hanging. Get behind, get on those hips. He's out front, he's in bad position. Don't really want to change our strategy here. Make sure that we're not turning into defensive wrestler. It's really been a back and forth match We got match two here. now, we need, to, we need to bail on this. All right, we're gonna be down. Seven, six, oh, this is really close. Looks like Wobach is gonna let him up. Daniel needs to be aggressive. He needs to get on the attack on offense. He needs to be changing his level. Moving his feet. Not getting caught flat-footed. Got 30 seconds. Unfortunately, we're backing up right now. I think that was a good offense. I mean, better make sure we gotta move. We gotta scramble here, we're gonna get in trouble. Okay, pop your hips up and you got a chance. Okay, Steve awarded two, even though we had a lot. It's tied up. It's tied up. This is actually a good position to probably be in. It because all we can do is score from here unless we got turned. There's two. A reversal. I, I'm hoping we can get some near fall short time. We only got two seconds That's left. That's two. I don't know what we, we want one. here. We get one? Okay. Uh, well, at least, again, what, what I was trying to say before the action started, at least it's eight to eight here. It's tied up. It's tied up. We're right. on bottom. The best, worst case scenario. We're in overtime, overtime now. We're in overtime now. You get the reversal. You win, you get the escape, you win. But now it's going to be first takedown. Daniel's strategy has been kind of to take a couple steps back and then, and then attack. We, we need an offense. He, fit, he continues with the same strategy. And unfortunately, it looks like it's going to cost us. I can't deny that he had great effort today. Um, it's, it's that was our first championship today. in the overtime. Yeah, that was that was solid wrestling. It just didn't go our way. Tough loss for Daniel. I really I really feel bad for him because he's worked so hard this season. We have our computer has not updated us on team scores. It still says that Southmont has 281 and Frankfurt 280. We're going through the awards right now, so we have a short delay here. And we'll move on right on to our next weight class. Okay, Frankfurt has another wrestler out here on the mat. These guys probably know each other, I'm assuming, uh, being uh, both from Clinton County. Kale Allball is the son of Jason Allball. Uh, Jason Allball coached at Frankfurt for many years. I know that he was my practice partner a lot my senior year. Uh, I know that he worked a lot with, with uh, Coach Chase Thompson, helped him win a state championship. Yeah, Chase so, credits him to uh, his difference in, on some of his matches and, and winning and getting to the state championship uh, was having having all ball there as a practice partner to really work and for, force him to, to uh, be aggressive. So hopefully uh, Campos can, can be successful here against him. They've, they have wrestled this year, correct? No, they have not. They didn't match they up They were different, the different weights. Um, Juan was our 138, and uh, he ended up losing, and then Daniel was able to challenge after he had dropped all his weight. And so then Juan went up to 145. Juan weighs in about 139. So he's giving a little weight up. Uh, Kale's just really tough. Yeah, obviously we, we, we keep talking about the, the tradition and family. Uh, when you got a family of wrestlers, it does make a difference. I mean, it doesn't automatically, just because you have a name, make you great, but 
when you got somebody who can talk to you about it at home or actually get down on the mat with you, it can, it can help. Now, how long has, has Juan been wrestling? Uh, he came out last year but did not finish. Um, and so this is his first full year. Okay, so you can't say he's a rookie, but he kind of is. So he didn't have a whole lot of experience. If he can land on if, top. Again, that just comes down to experience. Juan, if he gets you, he's super strong. He's enough to put a good wrestler away. Um, I, I, as he's I in trouble. Him, I can think about how the technique he's using and stuff that I remember Coach Allball teaching me. So <laughs> I can tell his dad definitely has an influence on his wrestling. Man, that, that's a tough That's bar tough. One. Oh, yeah. That's, that's tight. That's over. Again, that did not help Frankfurt's team score any. Uh, both those losses are huge. I, I can I can see his dad over in the corner. He's got a big smile on his face. I'd be pretty proud too. Uh, Kale went out and wrestled very well. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't wrestling for Frankfurt. <laughs> right. But we wish he, we wish he's over on our team. Yeah, so, but congratulations to Kale. Uh, like I said, Juan is just uh, for for the experience he has. He has been very successful, and it's just a testament to his ability to be out there in the championship matches today. Um, again, we have a short little uh, delay here. Uh, I believe we still have do we still have a match going on. Yeah, we got one one forty five pound match still going on. Wallbash and Oak Hill are still battling it out. It's in the second period. Twenty seconds left. Wallbash has a two to zero lead. This delay is because we still have wrestlers on the mat, on mat one. Looks like they're in the third period. Our, our clock's a little delayed. It looks like they're, it's now they're over. I'm not sure up. who won, though. Wall, Wall Wall got won. the victory on that one. That, that, that helps, again. It's a, it's a very tight score right now. Um, Frankfurt's going to have to pick up a couple of wins if we want to win this tournament. Uh, Southmont has the lead right now with one point, and they've still got lots of wrestlers in it. Uh, we have a wrestler going for third, Mauricio Mora. He's a first-year wrestler. Uh, he's wrestling at our 152 spot. And uh, the only reason why he doesn't wrestle at our 145 is because Juan and, and Daniel both can beat him. Uh, he weighs in about 143, so he's giving up a lot of weight here, potentially, to a, an opponent. We just had uh, Elijah Anthony come over and says he wants to commentate. If he would have stuck around for more than just a second, I would have put him on the show for a second. While we're waiting, I'll see if I can get Elijah over here. Elijah! Elijah! Come over here. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get you a little interview here real quick while we're waiting. Hello. Okay, hopefully you're not getting too much static from me moving my microphone. Uh, gonna ask Elijah a few questions here. Okay, Elijah, how do you feel about your day today? I feel pretty good, feel a lot better. Okay, you, there's not a whole lot of wrestlers that we've had come through Frankfurt that have been able to 
go middle school undefeated, three-time uh, conference champion, three-time middle school invitational champion. And right now you're setting basically one week away from being able to do that. And I, I believe the last person to do it was, I don't know if Chase did it or not. I don't think Chase did it. If Coach Thompson Josh did it or not. I think it was Josh Bird was the last person to do it for Frankfurt. Um, how are you going to keep your head straight and, and be ready to, to make that happen next week? I'm just going to keep going hard work. Just keep going through my motions. Just keep going hard. All right, well, we want to congratulate you on that win. Uh, we wish you the best of luck next week. Um, and again, the high school is really excited about getting this group of eighth graders. Uh, hopefully with your leadership, you guys are going to do a lot of, a lot of great things for Franklin High School. Thanks. Quick update, um, the kid from RJ just pinned Southmont. That helps us out. It was a pretty quick pin within uh, 30 seconds, looks like. So uh, we're going to finish out these uh, our, uh, third place match with uh, Mauricio and uh, Hawkins from uh, Oak Hill. Yeah, I didn't even, I, Elijah was standing right in front of the match and he was out there and done before I even had a chance it, it was to see quick. who was out there. It was quick. And that was, hold on, that, that was the Frankfurt kid? No, that was not the I'm Frankfurt sorry. kid. Our Frankfurt kid's wrestling for third. Uh, oh, this, over this on that one. Okay, that's at 160. We, um, I, I was saying, where's Hernandez at? Uh, that's the next weight that's class. That's the next weight class that's coming up. So on that one, we do have uh, Mora over there, 13-3 and three from Frankfurt, an eighth grader. He's wrestling Oak Hill. We're down two to nothing. Again, Mauricio is a first-year wrestler, come out eighth, eighth grade year. I uh, really wish we'd have had him as a sixth grader because uh, he's just he's done really well. Uh, he's learned a couple of moves, and uh, he's just very aggressive. And uh, if, if he knew more wrestling, he'd, he'd have been very dangerous. He'd probably been in this championship match. Uh, Mauricio's record is 13-3, and, and uh, Oak Hill, Jaron Hawkins is 10-4, both eighth graders. I don't know if our, our computer is slow or if the score has stayed the same for the leaders. Frankfurt is still in second place with 280. Maybe it has been updating because it looks like Lebanon, up. Lebanon has closed the gap. They have 272 and a half at, in third place. And then Southmont still only up on us one point with 281. Yeah, that last match with RJ Basket winning, that, that was huge helping us out quite a bit. I don't think Frankfurt won, judging by the reaction to the crowd. The 160 weight class is about to start. So again, no points for Frankfurt that round. They'll do their 152 awards, and then we'll get right on to 160. Hey, Mike, I'm not real sure about uh, middle school weight classes. Are they? Are they the same up from here on out? No, uh, we will do uh, 160, then we have a 175 weight class, and then we go back to the high school weight classes of 195, 220, and heavyweight. So we have four more matches right. before we're done tonight. Again, this is a long day for both fans, wrestlers, officials. It is, it is a really long day. It's a rewarding day, but it's a long day. It's a long day. Again, a Frankfurt gym. has got to get a win uh, if we want to try and, 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 and win this. Uh, Lebanon is really closing the gap on us uh, to put us into third place. They're now 276 and a half. We've got three and a half point lead over them, and we're still down by one against uh, Southmont. Assuming Coach Thompson will watch this video, and, and since he's standing right here and he's not really listening to me, uh, we would like to thank him for for uh, building our podium. You guys are going to see some pictures of the podium today. He spent a lot of time the last couple weeks building that podium. 
uh, which the high school and middle school will be using for many years to come. Many and years it, to come. It, it is, is a beautiful piece of work. It's solid, too. Eighty uh, for Frankfurt. This uh, another kid came out this year. His first year wrestler, and uh, eighty's another one. He just knows a couple of moves, and he's just really strong. But he does tend to put himself in bad position. Hopefully he can follow uh, Coach Thompson's advice here and hit these moves that are open here that he's uh, not, not taking advantage of. Work for the shot fake. He's got a slide by there if he can hit it. Could go for an ankle pick. We went over that a lot. Looks like he might have tried and went to the knee. He's got the underhook. Now if he can just get behind and get two. Bulldog City right here. If he can nice throw it. If he can throw it. That arm. Go to the back hip instead of on top. There we go. His hands down on the hip now. And he's there. Oh, can we get the pin? This is huge. That there was huge. That is huge. Wow, that's so exciting. Dogs. That's just pure strength right there. A.B. Hernandez just a, is just a strong opponent. Went, went after it. If, 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 when we started this season, nobody would have thought he would be here as a champion. And uh, he just came after it today. A.B. Hernandez maybe have just won this tournament for us. Get that pin in the finals. That, uh, that's some big points there. And again, we've got Lebanon and Southmont. Um, got to kind of root for or Lebanon here, and hopefully they can just get the win, not a not a pin or a, a bonus situation. Um, this is where a little bit of luck plays into it for Frankfurt. Score still haven't updated. Still waiting on that. It still says what. I don't know if, it, if it's our internet speeds. Um, I'm not sure what the lag time is because we're all on a, a Wi Fi network here, but yeah, it is definitely slow from computer to computer. For me, it's just frustrating because I'm excited and I want to see where it falls and where we where right. it Right, where that put us at to... Uh, I'm excited for this this group of, of wrestlers, Coach Thompson, you, Mike, for being on the staff, you know, Coach Waylon Kelly, all of you guys. I, I'm going to... You might be hearing me, but I'm going to have a little conversation with one of the, the middle school wrestlers who's been trying to help us out getting pictures from the podium. Can you keep getting those? I'll just hand it to you every time we go up. Okay, we're underway again. Like Mike says, we really need some help from Southmont. No, South from Lebanon. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, from Lebanon. And oh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. We don't, oh. and that was a quick pin for Southmont. Well, well Lebanon's close to it. Lebanon's Depending close to it. Depending on what happens in the next couple matches, it, it, it could hurt or help us. That was a fast pin. As I, as I tried to hand the, the that camera. That might have been the fastest pin of the day in the finals. It, it was definitely in the finals, but of the day, that might have been the fastest pin. I was trying to hand off the, the camera to get pictures from the podium for this for this later, uh, when, we, when we actually put this broadcast out, and I, missed, I basically missed the match. Like I said earlier, now we jump up to the 195 pound weight class. Uh, Frankfurt does have a uh, wrestler in the finals, uh, Brenton Wood. Again, another first year wrestler, came out his eighth grade year. Would have loved to have had him in sixth and seventh grade, but uh, he, he did not uh, come out. He's another student that is on the honor roll. Um, 
very studious, uh, very hard worker, but he has some balance issues, so hopefully he can <laughs> overcome that. So we got to land on top. Got to land on top. <laughs> he comes out about 110 miles an hour and doesn't always uh, keep good position and doesn't always keep good balance. Okay, with that fall, we do have an update. Unfortunately, uh, with that, with those points for uh, the the placement of Southmont wrestler at first, Southmont now has 291, Frankfurt at 286, and Lebanon at 276. Oak Hill's still not completely out of the ball game with 270 and a half. It, it's still a pretty tight race. It, it, again, it's, this has been one of the most exciting middle school meets I've been to in 20 years. It's it's yeah, it's very close. You know, I, I, I talk about it on a regular basis at the high school. I don't want to wrestle teams that, that are going to beat us by 50 to 100 points or in tournaments where we're getting beat by that much. I also don't want to win by that much. Right. You want to see good competition. And, and like I said, every school here has had somebody somewhere in a placement match. Obviously, you always want to win, but to me, more important than just winning is that you're, you're getting the competition. And this is so the competition that, where you can be competitive. Right. Where you can compete at your best level. Maybe you win, maybe you lose, but you're in the match no matter what. You and don't want those easy wins. Right. You, don't want, you don't want to get a forfeit either. You, know? you don't want to walk out and just have your hand raised. So this has been that kind of tournament. How do you, how do, you do the video? Uh, we actually have Jason Alba over here. Uh, it'll be on the Hot Dog Network. So oh, you got to YouTube channel. It yeah, it, it'll probably be Monday before it gets oh, uploaded. Oh, so it's not live right now. No. Uh, Josh was asking. I'll I'll send it to one of you. Okay. All right. Thanks. Again, that, that, that was uh, Kale's dad. Kale's dad. He he really wants to know. I, I think he probably didn't. He was over in his over in the corner coaching his son. He's like, I didn't even get video of that. So he'll get to hear us talking about him. When, right. <laughs> when when we send that send the copy of the the YouTube link over to him. So again, these are two wrestlers that have not met at each other. Uh, Clinton Curry and. Uh, Brenton Wood, Bob Mattis, and uh, Brenton Wood, both eighth graders. Yeah, Bob's got a record of nine and zero, so he's undefeated. Not sure if any of those are forfeits or not. Uh, Bob was not at County, so uh, or if he was, I did not see him. Again, these middle school kids don't even realize what's going on over here. Coming up, and they'll just they'll interrupt you if you're interrupt you. Yeah, you could be running the head table or trying to do a production. They just walk up to you and ask, "Man, that was a nice throw by. If you can finish it, got to get him to the mat." I think he had his hand down. Get behind, get behind, get behind. Oh, you got to call that too. That's two. Now he's gonna just break him down, up. but we're getting in trouble. Okay, we gave up two. That's all right. Two and two. It's, we're still early. Again, this is where, well, like I said earlier, Britain has struggled with balance and just control issues. And uh, he can he can land a lot of things, but he just has trouble finishing them. And I can only see him getting oh, better. Oh, oh, oh he's moving. so close. Just keep moving. You can see that he just really doesn't have body awareness. It's not that he doesn't right. have the effort. He, he just doesn't know where he is sometimes. He tries to do a move and. It, you're upside down and you don't know where you are. He's in trouble now. He's got to get that peeled oh. off. He's fighting. That's one thing that I like to. Two near fall got awarded. Now if he can just get out. A proud thing about being part of the Frankfurt wrestling program is I feel like most of the time our wrestlers, it's always the efforts there. And you can tell he's fighting. Oh, he gives all effort. I mean, oh. he's oh, he's so close. He just knows what he's doing. Don't, don't lock your hands. We do not have an arm. But as long as it don't, oh, he pinned him. That's a weird oh, one. Hmm. That might be the difference maker. Oh, boy. Oh, we have a hurt injury. Obviously, we're, we're all praying for, for his safety. Not um, sure what happened there. He, he was battling, and then as, as we started to get up, he just wasn't moving. I don't know if he, he just got his you know blood circulation cut off. They're taking him somewhere, I'm not sure. I'm sure it, it, something to do with, you know, just maybe cut his airway cut off. Cut his airway or off, maybe. I, 
I, I didn't feel like he hit his head or anything like that. It, it looked no, clean. No, it looked clean. Everything was good. Just it wasn't a, it wasn't a super aggressive no. or a hard hit. He did not lock his hand around there to, to uh, make an illegal move of any sort. Uh, sometimes that just happens. It's unfortunate. I, I you know, like I said, we hope and pray that the, that he's all right. Uh, he is walking off. He looks pretty pale though. Again, not quite sure what happened. I see some smiles and laughter over here on the wall for those of you who are watching and are concerned. He is still, he looks a little woozy. Again, but I, but I, I, think, I think he's going to be okay. Got a wrestler here for Frankfurt I gotta yell at, so excuse me here. Nelson, you are up, let's go! Hopefully we didn't blow your eardrums out, but one of our wrestlers was a little distracted. I don't know what <laughs> maybe caught up with the emotions. I mean, that can happen. You got you gotta keep your focus. I mean everybody can be concerned about an individual or what's going on, but like you gotta be focused on your match because when that official blows that whistle, you gotta be ready to wrestle. You gotta be ready to wrestle, right. I remember there was an incident at, at I believe it was a regional with Skylar Collins a few years ago, and he was wrestling the Wallover kid who was very experienced and, and I mean uh, he was a he's a he was a great wrestler, you oh, know. Yeah. And, but but Skylar was kind of concerned about what was going on because there was some fans and coaches from Lebanon were about ready to get into it to some sort of rumble and, and he wasn't ready for his match when he, he came up. He was excited to watch and see what was going on, all the excitement going on out in the hallway. And I, I don't think he was quite ready for, for his match. That wasn't typical of Skylar Collins, obviously. No. He was our last state qualifier. We do have wrestling going on. We got a Frankfurt wrestler over on mat three. We really could use this win against Southmont. We, we, we got two takedowns. Hopefully, oh, we got a Peterson roll. Oh, 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 oh. We did get reversed, but luckily we didn't go, go to our back and give up any points. Oh, he's, off, he's on his back now. Right in front of you. It is getting exciting because this is a difference maker in the tournament here. The Frankfurt kid needs to get a win, and we're, we oh, just got, we got pinned. We didn't need that. Okay, we, we have Lebanon on the mat. Uh, I'm trying to think who else we got out here still wrestling. And that was by Southmont. Right? That was by Southmont. Yeah, that, that may be the difference. It looks like Frankfurt's gonna come in second or third today. We have heavyweights still, so, but yeah, I don't know. It had an update from Britain's uh, fall. Well, oh, it has it. Okay, so, so I'm still waiting on chat. this. I, I like the optimist. Optim I can't even talk. I like the outlook that Mike has over here. Maybe our computer just hasn't refreshed in time to, to, to make me feel comfortable. But we'll see what happens here really soon. Looks like uh, Clinton Central here, riding tough, running a power half here on top of Lebanon. Clinton Central does have a 2-0 lead. I've watched this uh, Central kid, 220, Brandon. He's he's very tough. He's an aggressive uh, seventh grader, and uh, they, they've got a good wrestler there. Okay, we did. It's Ross and no kill. Really not a factor over on that last map that you guys can't view. Again, Clinton Central could really help out the hot dogs with a win here. A little bit of confusion. Doesn't know who wants top, down, where he wants to go. Okay, we have an update. Mike is right. The computer says that Frankfurt's got a one-point lead right now over Southmont. It'll update again with that win that they just had. I don't know what they'll get for a uh, 
a uh, third place match for a pin. Um, you know they get the two points. They'll get the bonus. two points, but uh, we've got one more wrestler yet to, to uh, wrestle, and Victor Lopez. He's he's got to have a win for us to have a chance. So it's going to come down to heavyweight. It's going to come down to heavyweight. You know, I think it was a great idea a few oh, years no. ago. That wouldn't have helped us. That, yeah, he he had him and he went flipped right over and now Lemons. He's got to work up now. 20 seconds. You don't see that typically in the 220. Uh, them flop around like that. It's pretty exciting. Like I said again, this the central boy is just really tough, an aggressive wrestler. Again, all the all those central kids, you know they they work hard because their room's got to be tough. Saved by the uh, clock there. Looks like it's going to be 8-3 going into uh, the third period. Correction, 5-3 going into the uh, third period. I don't know why a stall call wasn't called there. He didn't really make an attempt to, to return him to the mat. Central has got to get the takedown or force the stall call here again. He's on the attack. Oh, he's in trouble. Right into a headlock. I don't know if he's going to be able to put him on his back or not. Don't. Don't get pinned. Oh, you don't know that the way. help Frank it out. Those upper weights, when you get 220 on top of you, it's really it's difficult. It's really difficult to fight off. Right now, it looks like Southmont has the three-point lead. Southmont with 295 on team scores. Frankfurt, 292. Lebanon at 276 and a half. Obviously, uh, the points that they just scored there uh, by winning that match have not been added. So I don't think it's gonna put them above Frankfurt. It shouldn't put them above Frankfurt. Uh, Well, this is over quick. McConaughey went right to it, didn't they? Wow. That was about eight seconds. Really, we started this match a little early. We still got the awards podium going, but again, like we said, everybody's in a hurry. Can you do one more for me? The last one for heavy. Everybody's in a hurry to go home. It's, 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 it's six o'clock. We gotta hope that uh, Victor Lopez can get the pin over, over Carroll. I don't know, we'll see. We can't see it. You know, Vic, Victor's an eighth grader, he's six and three, and he's competing against Carol Wood, Ke Wood of Carroll, and he's a seventh grader who's ten and four. Victor's a transfer from Logan Sport. He came from their program, moved here uh, about, uh, about a month ago. So, really helped us out because then we had a true heavyweight. He, he comes in about 255. You know, that, that we, we, we're, we're putting this out because we really want to promote the sport of wrestling. It's also giving me as a, a beginning broadcast teacher some experience. Um, but the, the, the bad part about it, the negative here is we're not getting to watch all the matches. After that last heavyweight match, you guys can see a little bit here. We got a crowd of uh, brave fans here cheering on and we really can't see what's going on over on the far mat with the Frankfurt wrestler. Looks like it's 0 0 going into second. I don't know who had choice and what's going on. I can't see. Looks like Victor's going down. Hopefully, he can get the escape or the reversal. We're actually, for the first time today, we're going to try to move our camera over that mat just so we can see. So don't mind us twisting the camera around. Looks like Victor did get the escape. Still 
still can't see much. Team scores right now, Southmont with 295, Frankfurt was with 292, Lebanon with 276. Southmont has a wrestler over on the other mat, so they've got a potential to get some more points. Looks like they are going to get some more points. They've just about pinned their kid. And that's it. No, he, he fought it off. Southmont with the win. I don't think we can get first now. No, I, I think that Dennis in right there. Victor is still on the mat. The Victor, Victor did get the pin though, so but I don't think it's, it's going to be enough to uh, take us over. I think we're going to end up losing by a point. Again, is one of the closest scores that we've had in a, in a long time. It's like I said, it's been seven years since we've been this close, and uh, maybe maybe longer. Maybe it was eight or nine years ago when we were, were a half a point away from winning this tournament. basically just hanging out here to, to wait till the team scores update see what the final team score ends up being again it's been an exciting day and those of you who have listened and watched uh, the whole tournament we appreciate it um, we hope you've enjoyed it I hope it's valuable to you we definitely enjoyed doing it it's been a fun day right now it says the Southmont has 299 Frankfurt has 